I remember going to my high school's freshman orientation. And I was just sitting there, I was a little freshman. I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to look for. So many different classes of so many different categories. And I was really just looking for one, astronomy. I've always been interested in astronomy, and when I was walking down the science hallway, that's the word that I wanted to see. That's the class that I wanted to attend. But unfortunately, as I walked down that hall, I passed by biology, physics, chemistry, but I didn't see astronomy anywhere. And I remember going to the science department head or coordinator person, and I'm like, do we have an astronomy class that I can take, please? And so uh, she eventually guided me to the astronomy teacher at the time. And after a few minutes of just word vomiting at this poor man um, about how much I wanted to be an astronomer and how excited I was to be in an actual astronomy class at a school, he looked at me and he told me that, first of all, this is a semester-long introductory class. That's the only thing that we offer at this school. And even if you were to take my class, Veronica, I don't think you would quite fit in because this class is not for high achievers. And I just remember being so confused by these statements and a little bit irritated because I looked back out of the hallway and I'm like, they've got AP honors, you know, IB classes for biology and chemistry and all this stuff, where is that for astronomy? Isn't it a science? What's different about astronomy than any of these other sciences that I saw back out on the hall? Why specifically in Colorado, where I live, where the aerospace industry contributes over $15 billion a year, why was astronomy being shortchanged? I just, I couldn't understand, and I still don't today, which is <laughs> why I'm here four years later. So it really struck me. But as I'm going to college for astrophysics, actually, um, shout out to CU Boulder for that one, um, <laughs> I realized that I only got to this point because I was lucky enough to find resources and mentors and teachers to get me to teach myself what my education system did not teach me, which is astronomy. And the point is that no matter what you want to study, whether astronomy or something else, kids should not have to rely on getting lucky to learn what they love. That just is not right. And that's why I'm here today. It's because I think everyone deserves that chance to learn what they love. So if you're not specifically interested in astronomy, why does astronomy education matter? Fair question. So astronomy and space science is all around us. If you look in the news, there are weekly launches happening from private companies, and there's also several new discoveries being made and innovations happening throughout the industry. Um, for example, last Christmas, NASA sent up the James Webb Telescope which is the most powerful visual and infrared telescope that we've ever seen. So it's really cool. I recommend looking that up after. Um, it's literally everywhere in the media and just all around. So the actual rate of innovation within astronomy and astrophysics and space science is skyrocketing, pun intended. Um, <laughs> is at a rate that we have not seen since the space race, since the 60s. Elon Musk, who you may have heard of, um, the founder of SpaceX, a private space exploration company, he predicts to have humans on Mars by 2029. Now just think about that. That's, that's in seven years. We are acting as a society like space travel and space exploration is something in science fiction novels, in movies something that's happening 50 to 100 years in the future. And that's simply not the case. This is now. We need to prepare for the future that is honestly not waiting for us. We're gonna go to space, but we need to, as a society, prepare for what that's going to mean 
for the rest of us. And I'll give you an example of something current. We have astronauts on the space station, um, the ISS, International Space Station, and they are living in a state of zero gravity for an extended period of time, which could be months or even a year, I think. And they're coming down to Earth, and they're experiencing this huge shift in gravity. They're literally being crushed by the atmosphere. So we have physical therapists to try to get them readjusted to life on Earth. And there are unique challenges that these physical therapists have to be prepared for, because space is not just another type of injury or type of situation that someone would go through. So knowledge about space itself is essential for these people to know how to reintroduce these astronauts back into society. We have this idea of space science as being this abstract cosmology, astrophysics, what does the universe mean? That's not what space science has to be about. It can also be about how space relates to us. Space science isn't just astronomy. It's astrobiology, which is literally the study of aliens. I mean, how cool is that? Astrochemistry, astrogeology. There's so many different subfields that are overlooked because we simply don't have the general knowledge about this field that we should. And, and that's where the issue is, is about education on space science and astronomy. So we know that the problem lies in education, so now what do we do about that? Well, we have to look at who makes the curriculum. Who sets what we learn in school? That would be your state legislators and the school board. So state legislators, they're basically just setting the precedent for what you need to learn in your entire education, not necessarily a year-by-year -year basis, and they provide the funding given to the school by the state. So really, it's the school board who has most of the power to design the curriculum and to allocate these funds and decide kind of where classes fit within um, a student's education. So if you're if you have enough money to hire 10 different teachers and they can each teach five courses each, then you've got 50 slots for possible classes, right? So if this is a science department, then you're gonna have like a few core sciences taking up most of those slots. So if there is no general requirement from legislator, le legislature to provide an astronomy education, then a lot of those slots are going to be taken anyways. And there's another problem too. Most of the teachers that are being hired are not specifically um, qualified to teach astronomy. So often, if, if your school even bothers to teach astronomy at all, they just stick in the best option for a teacher to be able to staff the class, which is not great. Usually we want someone who's specifically qualified for a class to be able to teach it. Furthermore, even if the class somehow gets offered and there's a teacher who's willing to do this class, kids might not even sign up. If you've got 100 kids wanting to do AP Biology and you've got 10 wanting to do an astronomy class, which one's gonna win, you know? So, there's so many different factors in presenting a class that I can honestly understand why astronomy education is such an issue. So what do we do about it? Well, student awareness and really just passion for astronomy can go a long way because it isn't just about like getting into a class and having that class being offered, but it's really about signing up for the class when it is offered. It's taking that opportunity to learn more about space and understanding that space is important to learn about. I've already shown you so many reasons why it's important to learn about space. So really that's the first step in being able to fix this lack of education around astronomy and space science. The next thing that we can do is we can go back to 
the state legislators and we can say, why don't we make a general requirement for astronomy education? Or at least just say, you gotta learn about it at some point in your education. It doesn't have to be its own class, it doesn't have to be a core science or any of that, but just to learn about it, to make, make it have a little foothold, foothold <laughs> in your education. That's another option. But lastly, I think that the best way to enrich the education around astronomy is to include local resources and opportunities as they are presented, because they're out here. Especially here in Colorado, we have an immense aerospace industry. We've got Lockheed Martin. We have United Launch Alliance that's here. We've got Space Command. There's just so many opportunities to learn more about astronomy that we're not taking advantage of. So creating this bridge, especially in the high school community, between education and a future career, really just underscores what education is supposed to be about, which is preparing people for their futures. We are at the cusp of something momentous, something historic, and we're not learning about what's coming next. Space is the future. We can't afford to keep teaching the past. Thank you.